Yankee to Britain, the RTM Radio Network. Saturday night, man, a whole lot of country, and our special guest Derek Andrews standing by over here. He Let me just throw this at call. you. Just hang on a minute. You always do that to me. Now, <laughs> silence. <laughs> Uh, just a little rundown on Mr. Andrew here. He's a country singer, songwriter, guitarist, uh, grew up outside of Nashville, um, began singing as a child, inheriting a love of music from his father. Derek picked up his first instrument, an acoustic guitar, at the age of 12, and wrote Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and almost immediately began writing his own songs. Although Derek's roots are anchored deep in traditional country music, he grew up with an alternative rock dominating the airwaves, and I can relate to that. Now, with his rock-influenced country style, Derek Andrew hits close to home with his solid, relatable lyrics and his up-tempo alternative edge. His years working as an EMT have given him a no-quit work ethic and a unique perspective on life from which he draws something inspirational. And we have with us on the phone, Mr. Andrew. Hello, sir. Hello. Hey, y'all. There you go. <laughs> What's going on over there? Where are you in Georgia? I, right now I'm in Macon, Georgia. I'm a little bit south of Atlanta here. Oh, you watch out for them police Ooh, over did there. did he say bacon? <clears throat> bacon, Georgia, yes. Oh. It's the best place on earth. Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I am speaking a love language right now. I'm sure of it. You are. You are. You are. She's the bacon queen of New Orleans. <laughs> that is perfect. You fit right in. <laughs> Yep, so I'm I'm down visiting the in-laws this weekend, so we're actually, <laughs> believe it or not, we're going to watch Beauty and the Beast tomorrow. <laughs> mm. you, you know, of course, that's not going to be the same when you watch it now. <laughs> yeah, the spotlight's going to be on me whenever I open up with the opening tune, so they don't know what they're expecting. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't sit there and sing along out loud. <laughs> no, I'm going to stand up and sing a cock as big as mine and see what they say. <laughs> there goes your family right out the door. <laughs> It'll be worth it. <laughs> yeah, then you need to get a girly voice on and go, and a hole as tight as mine. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, I'm going to hell. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Come on over. It's not that bad of a place, really. <laughs> right. Which one here are driving is the question. Uh, so what exactly uh, you do? So you live in nashville now then i do not i live in georgia i live um in a little town called ella j it's just about 60 miles north of atlanta it's up in the mountains there okay so you're visiting in-laws or relatives whatever it was you're visiting them from there yeah we're down in macon this weekend mm -hmm. okay because we're in bacon <laughs> so you're making bacon is that it making yeah making bacon <laughs> does your girlfriend know this uh no does your wife uh yes <laughs> ah, wait, tried, hold on. That's opposite. Sorry. Tried to trip Wife him up. No, girlfriend does know. Tried to trip you up. Didn't work so well. I know. Dang it. Okay. The only important question I have for you. No, I'm waiting on this. Oh, one. here we go. Oh, it's very simple. It's very, it's very country boy. You'll love it. You got a four wheel okay. drive truck. Yes. What kind? Ford F one fifty. Bingo! We have a winner. <laughs> yes, sir. Finally, one of you country boys got enough sense to get a real truck. Oh, yeah. You can't go with those Chevys or Dodges, man. It's got to be Ford all the way. Definitely not a Dodge. <laughs> Lord, no. Oh, I drive wow. a FX4. Oh, nice. See, I was yeah, just telling was, you what yeah. you want to hear, Randall. I'm all good now. I <laughs> wet my own drawers over here. Do you, uh, do, you go, do you take it out and get it dirty? Absolutely. Ah. What's the point in having it if you don't? I'm coming over there getting the red mud. That's just where I'm headed. <laughs> That's just what That's, I'm uh, looking for. My daughter, I'll, I'll get her in the back seat, and we'll go find a mud hole and splash around through it pretty good. And, oh, yeah. And, of course, she's like, what are you doing, Daddy? I'm like, showing you how to live. Doing what boys and their big toys do. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. you got to get it dirty. All right, so tell us a little bit about the musical part of this. Now, it, uh, you are influenced by rock. Like who? What kind of rock, basically, group names? You know, the big push out of the early 90s, which was – you know, Nirvana, Stone Table Pilots, um, Alice in Chains, um, some of the more obscure ones like, um, let's see here, uh, Dishwalla and Seven Mary Three. You know, all those guys, and even the early, 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 early Marilyn Manson stuff. You know, I really dug that kind of music, Silverchair. And <clears throat> I grew up in a very traditional country household, so I never really knew music outside of George Jones and Waylon Jennings and... Merle Haggard and, you know, all those big names that you knew that were pretty much everywhere you turned whenever you looked to country music. And whenever I first started bleeding into some of this alternative rock, you know, I just really, I, it, I really connected with it. I felt like, you know, man, I could do this one day. And 
um, the more I got into it, you know, I always played it, but I never actually formally played it in a band or in, in a, a band setting. You know, actually, I went from country to, to rock to then to like a Christian rock type deal. So I played Christian music for a long, long time. So are we supposed to watch our language? No, Lord, no. Good, because it's too late. I'm a paramedic. <laughs> yeah, I and I you. just sang a cock as big as mine, so I don't think I'm safe. Hey. I want to ask you about the paramedic life too here in a in a little bit. Absolutely. But, uh, are you from like a musical family, or is it just you? No, um, you know my my dad. He always played in in bands. You know, he was a singer. He's a phenomenal songwriter he plays guitar my mom knows how to play uh, guitar you know she sings and my grandparents did you know my sister she actually recorded a song with bobby bear back whenever she was seven or eight wow um and so it's i think it's kind of in all of us you know and i, I just kind of i guess took it to the next level of trying to actually make something out of it you know they all play for for um good times and sitting around the house and you know and my sister performed for a while now um <clears throat> but i'm really just trying to give it a push and see see how it goes you know now all y'all sit around and uh, play together at all yeah yeah well and you know we were talking about my hair earlier and not definitely <laughs> not trying to be a, a yeah a debbie downer but my father has cancer and so i shaved my head uh, kind of in in memory of him and so we haven't been able to play as much as as we used to, um, but he's just had his last chemo treatment. He's only got a couple more radiation treatments, so hopefully that will start back really soon. So that's oh, the goal. Oh, yeah, let's hope so. That'll be yeah. nice. Yeah. I'm dreading yeah. that day. I hate the day my mom both did pass away. That's probably going to be the worst thing ever happened to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going we're gonna to focus on the good right now and make sure he gets over this mess first. So, so yes. how did you uh, – okay, so you played – you did play a lot of rock music then? I, I did. Uh, just me and some buddies always played rock music. We never actually went out and performed it anywhere. But, yeah, that's – after I learned a couple country songs and learned how to change chords and learned what, you know, the progressions and stuff were, I figured out that rock music, especially back then, was only like three fingers. They played something called power chords, and I was like, shoot, I can do this all day long, you know. And so I started playing all that stuff, yeah. So how did you uh, switch over to country? What made you take that step? <clears throat> you know, a couple years ago, um, a buddy of mine came to me and said, hey, let's let's play this song. You know, you, you work on the ambulance and I work here and, you know, in some downtime, let's bring our guitars to work and, and play some music together. So I thought it sounded like a good idea. And I had taken a break from music for about five or six years, so I didn't really pick up my guitar much. I didn't play a whole lot, but... Whenever he offered up to play with me, I decided that I would bring my guitar. And he said, hey, let's play this song. It's a song called Cruise by a band named Florida Georgia Line. Yeah. And I was like, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> and, you know, and so when I listened to it, I was like, oh, OK, you know, that's kind of it's got a little rocky to it. You know, I can kind of dig that. Well, then the more I started listening to the quote unquote now country or the bro country, um, I'm not going to say I fell in love with it, but. I liked that it was more aggressive than what I was used to hearing, which was the traditional country music. So that kind of got me back into it. And now I can kind of be myself and, and write my own stuff and have some of that alternative feel in it, as well as the country background, and, and push it to a country scene, if you will. Well, it sounds great. Is All This Time, is that the song right now that's the hot one? You know, that is. That's the one that kind of paved the way for where I'm at today. Um it was a, a a blend of who I wanted to be as an artist, you know, and it went, you know, it went good on independent charts. I think it reached number one on the indie charts and we, uh, which I never formally pushed it to radio. I never paid anybody to get it out there. Um, but Backyard Country is 94.9, the bull out of Atlanta. They have a segment called Backyard Country and we get, we got to number two there, um, 100.5 out of Augusta, they pushed it to number one, and I was like their featured artist of the week. And so the song itself has actually gave me the name of where I'm at to where I can give more music and people are actually looking forward to it now. Do you write all of your own songs? I know you mentioned that you're a songwriter, but do you write all of your songs or do you write them with other people? Yeah, we co-write. Um, all three of the songs on my EP were co-written with a guy named Craig Wilson and another guy named Jay Took. Uh, Craig and I write a ton of music together. 
uh, we really click. You know, it's just one of those things when you sit down and you you just kind of feed off of each other. And then Jay, uh, Jay did a lot of the instrumentation on the EP, um, <clears throat> and he was the executive producer on the album. It was just, it, it was one of those things where it was going too good not to allow it to happen. So um, I love to co-write music, though. And I take it you're in a band, are you? I am. I've got a couple of guys that play with me. We, um, well, there's four of us um, who play. We travel around and, and play at different venues and stuff. I do a lot of writer's rounds, though, and a lot of acoustic stuff as well. Well, let's get those guys, uh, let's at least involve them enough. What's their names? Uh, lead guitarist, his name is uh, Chris Bradley. This guy's unreal. He just went and played a couple shows with Jordan Rager. Chris Bradley? Uh, Chris Bradley, yeah. That's my brother. Uh, Oh, is it? (laughs) Isn't that weird? (laughs) How crazy is that? A female named Caroline McAllister. Ooh, she's going to kill me for messing up her name. Caroline McAllister. She plays bass. Uh, Trent Olney, he is uh, my drummer and also my band manager. And Seth Wooten is my my other guitarist. He's my lead slash rhythm guitarist. And then I play guitar um, whenever I decide to play. (laughs) Now, how'd you come across this bunch of rascals? You know, I met Trent uh, several years ago in a different uh, country trio that I was in, and he sat in and played bass for us a couple times, and I knew that his original gig was a drummer, and from him, it just kind of stemmed off to everybody else. Yeah. So he kind of introduced me to, to Chris, and then Seth came in, and then Chris's girlfriend is actually Caroline. She's the bass player, and she's she's kind of unreal. She's She's probably a better bass player than most guys I've had set in with me. Well, yeah, she's really good. Yeah, nothing better than a babe thumping a bass. Right, right, hitting the low notes. <laughs> Donna said she used to play bass, and I we don't have a guitar around, but I'd love to see. Oh her. goodness, come on! You oh, gotta drop I did the low notes. Years ago, years, years ago. <laughs> gotta pluck the G string. Yes. <laughs> her G string fell off a long time ago. Got, oh. The D string got stuck between my butt crack, and it's never to be seen again. <laughs> Well, so much for that guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, no, I lost the whole thing up there. <laughs> Might want to edit that into your song. And it's out of tune every time oh, I fart. <laughs> yeah, you get a low F note. Yeah. Right. <laughs> have you ever heard the foghorn on a ship? <laughs> exactly. I think we have one of those on our ambulance. <laughs> uh, so you guys, uh, do you have... Do you, you uh your songs sound great i take it you did it in a studio right we did we recorded the the mass of it at a a studio called slack keys um it's in it's there in nashville (laughs) and then jay took it to his personal studio which is atr uh, across the river productions and we finished it up there and did vocals and everything and he did all the the um, accessory work with all the extra guitars and some of the loops and stuff he put in at his own studio there yeah the sound is great on those sounds really good Thank you. Thank you. I will let them guys know for sure. So, and, <clears throat> go ahead. So what is your next plans? Do you have another song in the pipeline? I do. You know, I've got, um, I believe we're going to go back in here soon and start recording four or five more for the next album. It's, um, I've been playing some of the songs, you just kind of testing them out on my Facebook page for people. And the ones that they really kind of... <clears throat> turn to are the ones that i've really chosen for this next album so it's really going to be more about their choice than mine and i'm going to give them what they want to hear instead of what i just choose to play what kind of guitar do you have i have a taylor i have a taylor acoustic electric that i play a ce14 very good um also you something else coming out is that like a guitar version of a ford yeah pretty much because you wasn't you didn't sound very impressed randy it's four wheel (laughs) it's four wheel drive with a 12 inch lift in it (laughs) right (laughs) what uh now are you work you you working you still have a job i do i work full time as a paramedic yes okay now let me get into that for a minute okay what's um now what are you like a an alt Let's see. How do I want to ask you this? A paramedic is this for like a a fire company or is this a, just a paramedic, an EMT squad by itself? Or yeah, we are we are hospital based. We're owned by the hospital, but we run the county. So it's a small small county in Go- in Georgia called Gordon County, and we are owned, but we're contracted through the county. So we handle all the nine one one calls through the county as well. 
What's the, uh, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, but we don't know, of <clears> course. What's the worst uh, thing you've come across so far? Oh, man. It really depends on what you consider worst, you know. I mean, worst to some people are, you know, are not that bad. And, I mean, to me, worse is, um, you know, dismembered bodies and stuff. And that's just, eh, nobody should have to deal with that mess. Yeah, I was just about to say, is he, it must be like either children or yeah children children are one of the hardest ones you know uh because the big thing about children is that they really can't fend for themselves you know they they rely on people and sometimes we get in situations where that that reliability isn't there and there's issues or there are are unfortunate cases where people do things to children that we have to deal with on the other end that cause them harm and stuff and so kids are really bad yeah, I would think children and decapitations and things like that probably would rate right yeah, up there. Yeah, and, and people, you know, people really don't understand our culture because we, we cut up. You know, we make a lot of jokes, and <clears throat> people think that we're, we're insecure or we're insensitive. or not insecure. We're insensitive or rude, but really, you know, we cut up and we, we make jokes because it's a, it's a way for us to kind of self-preserve, you know, I mean, how could you not? Yeah. I mean, nobody, nobody deals with anything like that, you know, and you shouldn't have to deal with anything like that. We wasn't built to deal with, with tragedy every single day. And so we come up with our own little ways to, to make light of situations whenever they're really bad and stuff. So it's just, you know, it's one of those things that, it, it, like I said earlier, you know, it kind of just weighs on you after a while. You know, 11 years doing it, it's to a point to where, <clears throat> you know, what else can what else can possibly happen that we haven't already dealt with? Oh, you know, geez, don't say that. Right? Yeah. No. And that's that's where we're at, though. So, you know, you I'm still going- have. Uh- maybe a terrorist attack or God knows what yet. So yes. Have you ever uh... been in any really dangerous situation yourself? You know? I have, I've uh, been in situations where I've had guns pulled on me. I've been in, I can't tell you how many fights with patients and, um, I had a knife pulled on me once and been pepper sprayed and you name it. Wow. <laughs> now you're supposedly yeah. supposed to stand down from that stuff, but how do you keep yourself from actually going over the edge and, taken after some of these clowns well and and that's the thing is i go to work every day and my partner goes to work every day and everybody on my shift goes to work and the only rule that i truly have is at the end of my shift we're going home period whatever that looks like however that has to happen i'm going back home to my family whenever i get off at 8 30 in the morning so regardless of anything else you know that's my goal and if if i get swung at or if i get in a fight then i guess i'm just gonna have to fight because i'm not gonna sit there and take it you know right so you can deal and that's with the con- way i look at it you can deal with the consequences later absolutely yeah <laughs> i'd rather get fired than than be drug out somewhere so so uh where does your music fit into this you know do you uh is it something you do in your spare time or do you do a lot of music at work do you ever do you ever play your music your guitar in the ambulance I don't in the ambulance, but I play quite often in the station. Um, but, you know, we work 24 hours on and 48 hours off. So, like, I got off this morning at 830 and I won't go back until Monday. So I have Saturday and Sunday off. So usually what we'll do is is I'll book uh, shows and stuff for the days that I have off. And if not, then I'll just take a day off or I'll swap a shift to where I'll be able to, to get off. And I do a lot of live videos on my Facebook page. <clears throat> And from there, I'll, I'll go in uh, while I'm at work, and I'll try to fit in a live video and, you know, sing three or four songs just enough to, to where I can interact with the people who are there to hear me. And so uh, the, the biggest thing, I guess, is, is being able to talk to those guys because without them, then, I mean, I might as well be singing to a wall, you know. So right. I, try to, I try to get to them as much as possible. Well, what do you do in your free time to relax? I mean, do you uh, are you a gardener? Do you uh, you know woodworker or anything like that? You know, what I, I I enjoy working outside. You know, I like to hunt, love to fish. Um, I don't really have any desire to garden, if you will, but I like getting out and, and cleaning up the yard and mowing and you know just doing what what normal people do, if you will. What about all those fresh maters coming out of the garden? 
You know, I'm allergic to tomatoes. I can't, oh, no. <laughs> I can't, I can't eat you, tomatoes. Are you allergic to tomatoes as well? I'm allergic to tomatoes, yes. <laughs> you say tomato, I say tomato. Here Ameri- we go again. Americans always sound funny when they say tomato. 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 <laughs> tomato. <laughs> yes, it is. A, it's a mater around here. That's so. exactly the way I see it. <laughs> I got hillbilly blood from West Virginia, so I got that mater thing going on. There you go. We got maters and coyotes. That's Oh, we got all kinds of them nasty, noisy buggers around here. Yes, they're it's, everywhere. It's kind of cool to listen to them at night because they run in a big pack and they stay pretty close around here, but sometimes it's just annoying more than it is anything. It does get annoying, but if you, like, we have some uh, close to one of our EMS stations, and when the ambulance, one of the ambulance leaves, you can hear them, you know, especially at nighttime when they hit the siren and, drive off you can hear them yipping out in the woods there <laughs> i can imagine <laughs> singing those Derek andrew tunes out there in the woods. absolutely <laughs> yeah you know when i first got to texas i'm used to being in the city and uh, living out here in the country the first time i actually heard some coyotes i actually thought i was back in derby and i actually thought that there was uh, a load of drunk people singing it sounded the like the neighbors <laughs> yeah i did so it's kind of sounded far it's away it's those bloody brits again <laughs> i'll shut up over there <laughs> yeah you know, I used to live in southern Oklahoma in a little town called Ada. Ah, that ain't far away from here. Yeah, and I went, I went to Denison several times for some training that I did. Yeah, we go there quite a bit for breakfast and a oh, number of other yeah, things. Yeah, Denison, if you're ever up that way, we're just about 20 minutes drive away from Denison. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. No, we try to stay away from Sherman when we can. It's starting to grow over there. It's getting to be a damn big town, and I don't... Oh, is it? I try to avoid the cities like the plague. Hmm. It was still kind of starting... To become Sherman, if you will, whenever I was living there, which I lived there back in 2000, so that's about 16 years ago. Oh, they got big plans going on. They're going to re- <coughs> rebuild in 75, and oh my God, it's just, it won't be long, another few years, and it's going to be a friggin' little hellhole over if there. You've heard nice. of, um, if you've heard of Bells, that's where we are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Little bitty community there, huh? Yeah, and it can stay that way as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I moved out here. I lived over Gunner, which is uh, out the other side of Sherman. And mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, my mom and dad. My mom said, if my boys are going to live in Texas, I'm moving to Texas. So they moved over here, and I moved over and put a cabin up over here next to them. And, oh, nice. Uh, it's as much country as I can get without, you know, getting up in right. the mountains or something. But uh, right. I didn't want to get in a snow zone either. So we get just enough snow. I remember what them Ohio Christmases are like. Oh, I could only imagine. And that's plenty for me. I don't do that snow zone thing anymore. Sorry. We don't get much here in the mountains either. We uh, people people come here thinking, oh, it's LJ and it's in the mountains, so there's going to be snow. And they'll get here and they'll walk around in their little fur boots and little legging things and their <laughs> vest, and it's like 75 degrees outside. It's like you picked the wrong time. I know to wear that stuff. <clears throat> it gets 75 here, and everybody turns the heat on. Oh goodness gracious! Like seriously. Sorry, you was telling us about coming to Texas and Denison. What was you talking about? I did training. Uh, there whenever I were whenever I lived in uh, Oklahoma whenever I lived in Ada I used to go down and do training in Denison ah, training gotcha. for EMT no I worked at a bank believe it or not and I had to do some uh, bank training down there <laughs> oh friends with Mr. Drysdale eh I guess I don't know who they are <laughs> yeah <laughs> from the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> oh boy guys got it all going on so where do you see yourself in five years Oh, you know, I hope to be playing music full time. You know, that's my my five year goal is to be able to come off the ambulance at least full time. You know, maybe I can keep up my license and stuff and work part time, but to be an actual full time musician in five years. Wow. Are you? That's uh, the goal. Uh, obviously, not living off your music yet. No, 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 no. Actually, um, the the paramedic job and then my wife's job. You know, they they keep us afloat and everything that i do music wise it goes back into it and then i can you know record more songs or get more merch and um duplicate cds and t-shirts and all that stuff so it's just kind of a supplement to to the music business itself i guess what's this about t-shirts you know i had some and they all sold out my cd sold out my t-shirt sold out so we're working on a new design now uh for the next single that's going to come out and the song that we recently wrote is called I Ain't That Guy. Um, don't know. I'm really starting to lean towards that one now. So I don't know what I'm going to do about the about the design. I might I might change it around a little bit. That song's really, really weighing on me. So 
I really like it. So we, we might uh, change the single. <laughs> we do. Uh, we do. We make T-shirts and stuff. Now I don't know if we can make the style that you know if they're fancy enough for what you're doing. Yeah. But, if you uh, need a, if you need a uh, someone to make your T-shirts, let us know. I know how to get in touch with y'all. That's what we yes, do, yes. sign business, T-shirts, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, uh, oh, cool. I did not know that, though. Yeah, I've been doing it since yeah, 74. Signs, banners, so, uh, all sorts of things. Oh, awesome. <laughs> it's better than driving a truck anymore, that's for sure. Right, right. Yeah, I run the road for about 20 years, and when they started wanting to know every time you had to take a dump and what time you were going to eat, and I just decided, you know what, I don't need nobody looking over my back. I'm a big boy, so. Right, well, yeah. I mean, that micromanagement stuff ain't my... Ain't my cup of tea. Mm -mm. Ain't no country boy wants to put up with that. So do you uh, <laughs> do you sing on stage? Do, you know, in front of loads of crowds. Yeah, yeah. You know, we um we play and and I've played in places with thousands of people, and I've played in places with five people. You know, but they all get the same show. You know, it's not. I'm not gonna not play. I mean, those five people pay just as much as the thousand people. You know, so they're gonna get all of me. You know, that's all I've got, and that's what they're going to get. So it really varies on the location and on who knows who you are. And if they don't know who you are, then the people that do know who you are, how many friends they bring. So it's just one of those things that it kind of kind of ebbs and flows until you start making a, a bigger name for yourself. What, uh, what was it like the first time you stepped out in front of a really big crowd? <clears throat> it was really scary. You know, it was nervous, uh, it, and that was actually – Back when I was playing with a Christian group, we played at a college in Tennessee called um, Austin P. State University. We played at their homecoming on their football field, and I think there was an estimated some odd thirty-five thousand people there. Wow! And when you when you get out there, you know, and you start looking around and realizing that all these people are waiting on you, you know, it it gets really nerve and nervous, and 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 your hands start getting sweaty, and oh. start thinking about everything, you know, your heart starts thumping pretty good, and but once the music started, it was it was the music. So you just kind of fade into that and you do your thing and be done with it. And nerves aren't always a bad thing. You know, if you didn't want it bad enough, if you, you know, if you didn't want it to go so well, then, you know, you wouldn't feel that, would you? You know, nerves are a good thing. Yeah, no, you wouldn't really care. Uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't really matter, I don't think. If you just get out there and you're, you're lackadaisy about it or you, you take it half-heartedly, then... What does it matter if you do good or if you don't do good? Just go out there and do your thing and leave. Yeah, now, see, we're just the opposite. We like it here behind the microphones, but we don't like to stand out there in front of all these people doing things. <laughs> it takes some getting used to. You yeah. know, I acted for a while. You know, I did some acting um, in some uh, a community theater, and I was in choir in high school, and so we did a lot of performances there. We did a lot of plays and stuff, so it kind of got my feet wet with getting out in front of people oh bless your heart for being able to do it hey what uh, <laughs> what songs did you listen to when you were young in short trousers you know one of the the first songs i ever learned um was a song called cold fort worth beer by george Strait. absolutely love that song my dad sang it and i learned it and um we played it over and over and over and finally I can remember the first time Dad ever played it by himself, and I sang it, and I didn't know half the words to it. But by gosh, I gave it my all. I was maybe five or six. Um, but a lot of the George Jones stuff, you know, um, I Don't Need Your Rocking Chair, Travis Tritt. You know, I really used to love Travis Tritt stuff. Um, Trouble, and um, he did a song called Where Corn Don't Grow, you know. and those right. are, I, I just like the, the feel-good songs, you know. Yeah, that's the kind of music I like. I prefer that over anything else. When did you learn to play guitar? <clears throat> I was right at 12. I, um, I never formally took lessons, but Dad Dad always played, so he wrote the chords down for me to learn, you know. And the Sunday paper in Nashville was called The Tennessean, and there was a music section in there that had had a featured song of the week. And so... Above the lyrics of that song, there would be the chord letters. And so what I'd do is I'd cut those out of the paper, and I'd sit down, and I'd look at my little chord chart, and I'd look at the song, and I'd know the song. And so I'd figure out how to play it by looking at the notes over the lyrics and then referencing back to my chord chart until I finally understood what was going on. So that's how I learned to play guitar. So do you read music? I do. I, I read music. I, I, I started learning to read music in sixth grade. 
when I, I played trumpet. <laughs> I have no idea how to read it. The only thing I know is a cleft, and that's in your chin. Exactly, right in the right in the center. People would call mine a butt chin. <laughs> is that because you got a big butt crack on your face? Because I have a, I have a, it's a very strong chin. Thank you. Well, it's not a butt crack. <laughs> I'm going to look at your I'm going to look at your photos now, look. Totally a butt have crack. Have you seen the size of that butt crack on his face? You should imagine the other one. <laughs> you think that one's big. Well, you ain't seen the wife's. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I got to get my digs where I can. She'll beat me later. She <laughs> Absolutely. Will. She will. Look at his beard going that way because the butt crack has pushed the hair that way, look. It does. It pushes it sideways. <laughs> because it, it just passed gas and it blew the hair. Oh, you're nasty. <laughs> hey, it's gone sideways there, look. The picture, Love that face. the picture with the big lips. <laughs> Your butt crack went sideways. Because <laughs> my lips were pushing it out of the way. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'd like to apologize, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh so, are you done? Have you berated him and belittled him enough now? I can ask him a couple other questions and yes, we'll let him go. <laughs> I'm good. I you, uh, you got anything else you'd like to add yourself? Uh, what's you got a Facebook page, right? I do. It's um, just look for Derek Andrew with a little blue check mark by it. That's me. And of course, you have a web page. I do. DerekAndrewMusic.com. I need to update that thing. Anything? Yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> anything else? Because uh... we want to see a picture of the arse. Not, not your back end one, the other one. On the your, front on one? Your, on your face, yeah. The <laughs> your, front your, one? Your, your top arse. <laughs> Got it. Your, your top ass? <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. Chris, Don't marry Christy, British, whatever you do. Christy, <laughs> that's like a stuff. Pandora's box. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you about Pandora's box. <laughs> oh? <laughs> it needs a good shaving. <laughs> All right, now, if you're done, wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Yes, where can we find you? See, did you keep interrupting us? Derek Andrew Music is on Instagram, and Derek Andrew underscore is on Twitter. And then, obviously, the DerekAndrewMusic.com is my Facebook page, or is my website, and my Facebook page is just Derek Andrew. Well, very good. That all sounds pretty easy. Yeah, I tried to use my name. Well, that's what it's there for. <laughs> all right, a few more questions and we'll let you go. Let's do it. Don't want to drive you crazy. All right, uh, 10 questions and then you're out of here. Uh, no number Lord. one, what is your favorite word? Damn it. What is your least favorite word? Can I say it online? Sure. <laughs> Cunt. That's the beauty, I hate that word. That's the beauty of internet radio is you can pretty much do what you want. All right. Okay, uh, I like it. Uh, number three, what turns you on? Mm, man, that's a big list. I gotta narrow it down real quick. Is your wife listening? Yeah. Choose carefully. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that big list just went down a couple notches. Um, no, I'm joking. Um, probably a good sense of humor. Yes, I couldn't agree more. What turns you off? Um, being like better than somebody. Doing or that. acting like people who act like they're better than everybody. We all put our pants on the same way. Well, you'd You're not better so. than me. You'd like to think <laughs> so, right? Right. Uh, number five, what sound do you love? Mm, a steel guitar. What sound do you hate? People eating. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I have the same problem with this. Oh, my here. gosh. It drives me up the wall. That's why you turn the music up louder. Yes. What's your favorite curse word? Damn it. <laughs> what profession other than yours would you like to attempt? A profession other than mine would I like to attempt? Professional musician. What profession would you not like to do? Could I say mine? No. Um, I wouldn't want to be an underwater basket weaver. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta admit, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Oh, my God. I don't even think a psychic could have saw that one coming. <laughs> and number 10, the hardest one for anybody to answer. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You done good. All righty. Very good. That's it. I think my Perfect. holiness is done over here asking anything important. <laughs> Aight. <laughs> Aight. <laughs> um, if you have anything to add, please do. I think I'm good. I think you guys covered the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and well, more, and more. 
<laughs> we had promised ourselves when we started taking guests, what, a year or two ago? A year ago, whatever uh -huh. it was. We had promised we would never get into any personal stuff because, you know, we don't care if you're divorced, if you're banging three chicks, that kind of thing makes no difference to us. We just right. want to know who you are and what kind of person you are and what kind of fun you like to have. And we keep it at that because, you know, people can go online and read cheap magazines at the kiosk or whatever. And, uh, right. you know, so we stay away from that kind of stuff. So it's been a hoot. Thank you. Well, very there much. you have it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I really do. Other than that, let me have another <laughs> cigarette over here. Um, I think we're done. <laughs> we got your last tune we're going to jam here all this time for Derek Andrew. Thank you, sir, for joining us. We sure do appreciate you taking the time. Yes, and feel free to join us anytime. Anytime, you please. Surprise us with a call. I will certainly do. Surprise us with a call and cuss and swear so we won't know who it is. Heck yeah. <laughs> and if, I you got can that down. Us, if you can learn to speak British, please do. It would be a joy. Uh, I'm going to learn. All righty then. Take care of yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Bye yep. bye. Bye bye. Derek Andrews, and all this time, Yankee in the Brit. Right girl, wrong time, but you never ever left my mind. Maybe tonight's gonna be the night. You left him, I left her. Maybe, baby, we can fix the hurt.